My first question for you today is, uh, I'm just wondering uh, what got you motivated in, uh, in this effort to address climate change through biking? What motivated me um, to get involved, is, it, it, well, it, it all happened really by coincidence because I'm a filmmaker and a photographer and one day I took one simple photo of a, of a Copenhagener on her way to work, um, as I was, and, um, and I, you know, I posted it on Flickr where I had a large network and people were just, you know, it was a nice photo. I didn't, I didn't notice the bike. You don't notice the bike when you live here. You just get around on yeah. it. Um, and, um, and a lot of people uh, in my network on Flickr were like, oh, wow, she's riding in a skirt. You know, how does she do that? And I thought that was a really odd question because that's what every woman does here, really. Um, so it just sort of started a photography series of, uh, of cycling Copenhageners, something I never noticed before, even though I ride my bike every day. And, um, and from there, it went to becoming a blog and then to two blogs. And now it's, uh, um, you know, these two rather well-known blogs about Copenhagen's bicycle culture have inspired many, many people around the world to, to reconsider the bicycle as... Um, an acceptable and feasible transport form in urban cities. So um, I think my motivation was the fact that I was motivating people and inspiring people because uh, it, w it all started by coincidence. So the fact that people are looking to Copenhagen as you know the world cycling capital um, really uh, you know started it all off. So I've taken it from there, and now um, yeah, I guess they call me the Danish bicycle ambassador. Yeah, you're the Danish bicycle ambassador. I don't know what that means, but. Uh, <laughs> But um, so that's really how it all started and, and, and why uh, I do what I do now. So Michael, I'm just wondering, uh, what, what inspires your work? Uh, what, do you have an anecdote about an action that really inspired you to get into this? I know you started talking about the photo that you took, but uh, what, what kept you going? Um, sorry. <clears throat> I think, um, well, my daily inspiration for doing what I do really is the fact that, that here in Copenhagen we've demystified the bicycle. It's, uh, I often compare um, our relationship to the bicycle to our relationship with our vacuum cleaners. We all have one, we all know how to use one, and we all use them, um, but we don't think about it. The, the, the bicycle, like the vacuum cleaner, is a tool which achieves a, a very effective goal in getting us around our city. Um, and um, what inspires me is the fact that so many people in the city just use the bicycle every day. Okay, ready? <coughs> yeah. So, uh, Michael, everyone, everyone wants to know, everyone wants to know how they can change uh, or change their lives to more align with their values on climate change. Uh, how how can biking be part of this, and how can how can people get involved with biking, even even if they don't see climate change as a big issue? Do you think that they can be part of the solution still? Now, my approach. To sort of environmentalism is that I'm not an environmentalist, and I don't actually focus um, in any of my work on really on, on environmentalism. As, as, you know, um, what I, what I do is I just show the bicycle in Copenhagen and in other cities around the world how the bicycle can be you know an integral part of the traffic solution. Um, it used to be, you know, for you know for decades up until the Second World War, all around the world people were riding bikes everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's why I call it bicycle culture 2.0. That's where we are now. That's where we should be going. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I lost my. I lost it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> by bicycle, bicycle culture 2.0. <coughs> yeah, I was thinking before that. I. What was you, the question? Okay, the question Sorry. was uh, talking about values and how people can. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, do you want me to start again, or do you want to? Can you edit in that? I can edit it. <coughs> okay. Um, so what what I try to do is just to show people what is possible. Um, with using the bicycle as we do here in Copenhagen. You know, we have 37% uh, of all uh, commuting to work or to education is by bicycle, and 55% of all trips are actually by bicycle. So just by showing instead of telling, in a way, um, that's sort of my approach to, uh, to inspiring people to, uh, re you know, accept the bicycle on the urban landscape again. And, um, and that, that's really the easiest way to do it. In order to, in order to get people to ride a bicycle in a city, First of all, you need visionary politicians. They don't grow on trees, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, and you need separated bicycle infrastructure. If you if you want to reach you know anything close to the levels that we have here, or even just double digits, you know modal share for bicycles, you need separated infrastructure. Um, people need to, to be safe and and to have this perception of safety. Um, so this is really you know the key to uh, to encouraging people to cycle. But really, like I said before, if you make the bicycle the quickest route through a city. Um, everybody and their dog will get on board. 
you know, and you're not pointing your finger telling them you have to save the planet. You know, all you're doing is making their, 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 their daily lives quicker and healthier. And, and then there's all the benefits, the health benefits that follow with uh, a cycling population. I mean, it's, it's, the, the benefits are massive, you know. Um, we've determined here in Copenhagen that for every kilometer cycled um, society, you know, the city, we put 25 American cents in our pocket, net profit, um, because, of, because of public health, because of less pollution and whatnot. Um, for every kilometer driven in a car, we're paying out 16 cents. So, you know, car culture is not very cost efficient. Um, so, you know, this, there's so many benefits to it. So if you show people how to do it, and you make it easy for them to do it, and you make it quick for them to, to ride a bike in their city, you're well on your way. Make it convenient. Make it convenient, definitely. Hey, Michael. Uh, so why, why is Copenhagen the perfect city for the uh, COP15 talks, these historic talks? I think that Copenhagen is not a bad choice for the climate change talks here, COP15. Um, I don't know if it's the perfect city. I don't really think there is a perfect city for, for, for such like pandemonium that we're seeing here this week. Um, I don't think Denmark really, to be honest, is the perfect country to host them, but I think Copenhagen is a fine choice for, for being a city. You know, I mean, Denmark gets a lot of press at the moment about, you know, we, I mean, we have 20% of all of our power is generated by wind, which is great. Um, you know, we have uh, massive amounts of, uh, of, of people cycling in our cities and all the benefits that, that entails. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we, that, we, that we do that inspire the rest of the world. But you know what? We're still burning coal, you know. We have high-tech filters, you know. It's all very, very, you know, clean in a way. But we're still, you know, we're still burning coal. Um, we're not doing enough, I don't think. And this is, you know, this is me being political now, but a lot of it is, is the current government that we have um, who, who are, who are not, simply not doing enough. Um, nationally as well, you know, this, the levels of cycling you see here, you don't see it in, uh, you know, in, in, in some of the other cities. It's still quite high compared to, you know, global levels. You still have 15, 20 percent cycling, but um, we're, we're simply not doing enough. And um, so while, while I think Copenhagen is, is, a, is a good choice, um, you know, yeah, I don't really know what, where else you would, you know, hold these, uh, this, this conference. But, you know, it's, it's, it's simply not good enough what, what we're doing or what we're not doing. Um, so. Welcoming the world to Copenhagen is is brilliant, and I'm, I'm we're all you know I'm a Copenhagener. We're thrilled that you're all here. Um, but you know, let's just take it all with a bit of a, a grain of salt. You know, don't you know? We, we need to do more. Thanks. That was a real. What can people do in their hometowns to uh, make make their make their towns more bike friendly? I know <laughs> you talked about this a little bit, but do you have any other advice? I think that uh, what what people can do. In, you know, in their home cities, you know, it, it's really quite simple. You know, it's 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 riding a bike because you know, bicycling down to the shops or down, you know, you know, short trips by bike, you know, or even commuting by bike. Bicycling isn't dangerous. There's no statistical proof that it's any more dangerous than anything else. You know, mm -hmm. um, so in, you know, getting on, getting getting the bicycle. You know, going for bike rides if you don't want to ride to work. You know, getting on, using the bicycle, sort of rediscovering the bicycle. Um, on an advocacy level, um, yeah, lobbying for, for separated bicycle infrastructure. And we're seeing this a lot, fortunately, in your country. Um, there's a lot of cities, New York and New Portland. York, yep. New York, and, uh, and many other smaller cities. Yeah, many, many other smaller cities um, are, 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 are starting to think, you know, are starting to Copenhagenize themselves and, 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 and build Copenhagen, Copenhagen style bike lanes. This increases the number of traffic, uh, the, the number of people riding on bikes. So lobbying for separated infrastructure. You know, lobbying for uh, reinstating the bicycle on the urban landscape, just like it used to, you know, just like 70 years ago, just like we all used to, we all used to ride our this bikes. This is no new thing, right? No, this is nothing new. It's, 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 it's just, you know, doing it again. That's the great thing. The bicycle wasn't invented yesterday. It was invented 120 years ago, and millions and millions and millions of people all around the world in the last 120 years understand, have understood that the bicycle is actually quite a cool thing, you know, and a, and a, a respected player in the urban you know, transport equation. So... Get on your bikes and lobby for uh, separated infrastructure. Well, thank you, Michael, so much for meeting with me today. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. You guys got to go to Bella Center, right? Yeah. Yep. You got, I mean, we're, we're way ahead of time, according to what the girl emailed me. What's her name? Uh, Nicole. Nicole. Yeah. Ahead of time for what? Well, uh, she, she told me, oh, you, I know more about your life than you do, I guess. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you guys know you got to go to